First of all, uh, regarding the hijab, the sister is asking about the different types of hijab a woman should wear because we have the hijab, then we have the dijilbab, which is mentioned in the Quran. Then some say that khimar, as worn in Egypt and elsewhere, which is just the head cover, but it extends sometimes to the waist, sometimes to the knees, one head cover. Or is it the jilbab that goes from top to the feet? Or is it the abaya? Or do we have to wear a gown underneath or this or that? Don't get into technicalities. What is the essence of hijab? It is both physically and mentally. What do you mean by mentally? This is the first time I hear something that is related to mental hijab. Well, I see nowadays in Nigeria, elsewhere, where women cover up from head to toe, which is good. But she is so loud. She is so vocal. You can hear her laughter from the end of the aisle. She cracks jokes and she mixes with men. Though she's covered, this is not hijab. Hijab is not only a dress code, but in addition, it is the way that a woman treats and deals with the opposite gender. And this is why Allah Azza wa Jal addressed the mothers of the believers and the address is for the all women of Muslims that if you speak, then do not soften your voice. Sheikh, my voice is soft by nature. There is a difference between speaking in a feminine voice that lures men, and you know what I mean, or by straightforward, what's the ruling on this? What's the ruling on this is accepted. But when you say, uh, what's the ruling on this, Sheikh? And the Sheikh is melting like butter. What are you doing? This is softening the voice, it is not halal. We see this in the souk, in the market, when a woman wants to buy something and she addresses the salesman in a soft voice to make a discount or please, or do this. This is haram, you should be straightforward. So this is what is meant by hijab being physical and mental. Physical hijab is simple. Customs vary from country to country. So I would not ask women to wear the black abaya of Saudi women because this may not fit in Europe or in America or in Nigeria, Allah knows. But there are characteristics of the hijab that a woman should adhere to. It shouldn't be tight. And I've seen a lot of women here in Nigeria wearing the sort of, uh, uh, in, in Arabic, you call it balto. It's, it's like a raincoat, but it, it's tight at the waist. So it's exposing her shoulders, her uh, uh, chest, and the size of her waist. This is closer to a dress rather than a jilbab or a, a, a coat or a jacket, whatever you can uh, call it. It has to be loose, ample, that does not expose her bone structure and curves because this is what draws men's attention. It must not be see-through. So yes, it can be loose, but some women wear something that you can see what's underneath of that. This is not permissible. It must not imitate men and it must not be the dress code of disbelieving women. And it should not be a source of attraction by itself. So imagine a woman comes out in a black jilbab. Very good, very nice. But it has Versace or Armani logo this big on her back. Wherever she goes, people will look at her. Maybe she's wearing a loose and not transparent abaya, but it is pink Hello? or it is like really red. No, this is not applicable or acceptable. It, has, it must not be fitna by itself. 
and so on. So don't limit yourself to what our sisters in Egypt are wearing, which is khimar, which is very good, because they wear the, uh, 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 the raincoat or the black uh, balto, what we call it, but they uh, uh, wear on top of it the, hij the khimar, which covers all of their head, their shoulders, and it goes down to their knees or to their waist, which is very, mashallah, good. But you don't have to limit yourself in this. You should look into the characteristics of the Islamic hijab, implement it according to your culture, providing it's not eye-catching, providing it your normal, and it, it, it fits that, inshallah. And